Oh my God, no way! I can't help but get sucked into the subculture of custom toy makers on Instagram. My favorites are the ones that are parodies of the old school G.I. Joes and Hasbro Star Wars figures, but instead of like Snake Eyes and Han Solo, it's like an action figure of Urkelbot or SNL's Matt Foley. Pretty much any obscure reference or meme can be made into a toy. Let's go down the rabbit hole into the weird wonderland of hilarious custom action figures you never knew existed, but now need to own. The world of custom bootlegs is vast, but here are a few of my picks for talented toy masters that sit at the top of that one-of-a-kind bootleg mountain. Death by Toys is a trailblazer in the bootleg game. Recently, he was inspired by an action figure of David Lynch's Eraserhead. That was cool. But then he got really weird and mashed it up with Iron Mike Tyson. Now that's ludicrous. Each eraser head so separately. I'm a huge fan of G.I. Joe figures and especially the comic books written by Larry Hama. So when I saw this Larry Hama custom G.I. Joe figure complete with dossier backing card, my mind was blown and I just had to seek out the weirdo artist who made it at his Chinatown studio. Considered a pioneer in the bootleg scene, the Sucklord is an underground legend with followers that include show creator Adam Goldberg, who put him in an episode of The Goldbergs. They're GoBots that transform into rocks. A toy rock? Yep, that's him as a sleazy toy store clerk. I bought every last rock lord. Thanks a lot, Sucklord. What'd you call me? Finding Sucklord's lair was harder than I expected. I wasn't even sure if I had the right address. Take the stairs to three. The whole thing felt pretty shady. What's up, Lord? Oh, there hey, is. nice to meet ya. <laughs> Come on in. Let me make Thank toys. You. You'll recognize his work right away. He created an alter ego of himself that bears a slight resemblance to a certain Mandalorian bounty hunter. I'm a, I'm a horrible, lonely, misanthropic workaholic, you know? But the Suck Lord is like, you know, a man of the world, and he travels, and he gets all the women, and he has all these adventures. Clearly, Sucklord gets inspiration from random stuff in his studio. You know, like for example, this old corpse figure, it just sort of looked like Fidel Castro, and I thought that'd be funny. It's not about the object, it's about the acquisition of the object, and it's about the story around getting the object. And you have to deal with sort of shady, illicit characters. I used to go all out where I would make people meet me in the street. This is real Sucklord who sit right out of the factory. That's what's up. Still got the flash on him. Sucklord is pretty unique among bootleggers in that he's branched out into other mediums. If you haven't seen his web series, Toy Lords of Chinatown, you are missing out. <sighs> What's going on? Bootleggers ripping off my <laughs> We got him trapped in the basement. If you have seen it, then you probably smoke pop. A lot of times people dismiss this type of work because it's a toy. And if you're of a certain age, like if you're a boomer, you didn't grow up with this stuff, so it's something you bought for your kid. You know, and I feel like I have to give it some sort of meaning or context in order to sell this to the art world. All this RC talk was cool, but I really wanted to see the master in action. Casting a resin figure from scratch. We're gonna do a casting now. Step one, make a mold of an existing piece. So I made a mold of this basic Stormtrooper figure. Okay. Here it is. Next, mix the chemicals. Some people are, are much more responsible than me, and they like actually weigh this out, and they figure out exactly how much they need, and I'm just too stupid for that, so I just eyeball it. It looks like a one-to-one -one ratio. It's similar to like that two-part epoxy stuff that, that you make glue out of. And then you just have these different pigments, like this is the day, this is the day glow pink, and then a little bit of white, just to give it that sort of bubblegum look. Give it a couple of vigorous whisks. Make sure that the material is fully blended, and then you just pour it in the mold. You squeeze on the arms. The mold then goes into a pressure tank to get rid of any bubbles. So. <laughs> While we wait for the pieces to set, let's talk about other talented toy masters living that bootleg life. Many of them, like our next artist, were inspired by the work of the Suck Lord. <laughs> Retro gimmicks figures definitely make me stop scrolling and laugh out loud. Here's one of his creations right here. Retro gimmicks humor is right up my alley. In my opinion, his work is probably the funniest in the custom toy scene. But you probably couldn't tell from talking to the guy on FaceTime. Hey man, so what makes a good custom figure? I think what makes a good custom action figure is the initial impact it has on people when they see it. Like if someone's scrolling Instagram and they see your figure and they laugh, I think that's what kind of makes it. I made this one the um, Wilford Brimley diabetes action figure because <laughs> I knew that that 
infomercial with Wilford Brimley was popular and like I'm Wilford Brimley and I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes about diabetes. It's been parodied on TV and there's memes of it and stuff. Uh, diabetes. I'd like to treat you to you to a diabetes. So I just put it up there and it became like the most popular thing I've ever made. Have you ever received a cease and desist? Uh, luckily, I haven't received a cease and desist at this point. I feel like a lot of what I do could be, you could argue that it's a parody. So hopefully that's like protected under copyright law. I think another part of it is these big companies just aren't concerned with like small time guys like me. I think if you started to manufacture them, that's when, you know, Disney would tap you on the shoulder. So what's your favorite figure that you've made? I think my current favorite is probably, I've been doing these two packs, so I did like Nick Kroll and John Mulaney from Oh Hello. It's Oh Hello on Broadway on Netflix. And I just really like the way it turned out. Like, it's just silly, but I enjoy it. All right, thanks, man. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate you having me on. Our next Toy Master, Readful Things, is mind-bending because he takes the most random, insignificant moments and commemorates them. I imagine his process is something like this. Step one, stumble across a photo on the internet of Kenny Baker, the actor who played R2-D2, taking a lunch break on the set of Star Wars A New Hope. Step two, hollow out the R2 figure. Step three, slip a little Kenny in there. Looks like maybe a cake topper? Genius. Big news from Brown's Chicken. Remember a few years ago when that old commercial of Steve Carell hawking fried chicken surfaced? Well now, there's an action figure for that. Thank you, sir. And speaking of randos, remember this meme, my dudes? It is Wednesday, my dudes. Well, he was immortalized in our next Toy Master, Dan O'Brown, an OG legend in the bootleg game. And here he is, via video chat. So what's up, Dano? Hey there. So why do people buy these crazy things? You know, I don't know why. I know for me, I first bought my first bootleg toy off an artist that goes by Death by Toys because he was making um, Nintendo-themed bootlegs, and I collect old Nintendo stuff. So that's why I got into it. I saw action figures that I had wished existed that never did until then. I think there's an appetite for absurdity and, and I feel that for some people. I think people are drawn to weird stuff and that's what I do is a lot of weird things that, that probably shouldn't even be action figures. What are you working on there? What I make the most money on and what I work the most on privately is just commissions like this. This is just a regular dude that uh, wanted a action figure of himself. So just finished him up and he'll be getting boxed up and shipped out in the morning. So what's the most a figure of yours has sold for? Um, my figures go all over the place, but I'd say the one that sold for the most was uh, an eBay auction for a Tyrone Biggins character. It's one of the Chappelle Show characters, and it ended at 1300 Shazam! <laughs> Best seller ever. Very excited when that happens. So you can make a living doing this? I think you can definitely make a living doing this. I make enough right now on art that I could theoretically support my family off of this. I wouldn't want to quit my full-time job where I've been working for a long time and lose my benefits and all that, um, hoping to make this last. All right, well, thanks for talking to us. I'll let you get back to work. I appreciate you taking the time. Okay, our Sucklord figures should be ready. Let's see how it came out. Voila. Now he's gay. This one's intact. See, this one didn't fill. Oh, uh, okay. It's essentially useless, but the hands can go in the reject box. You never know. You never know when you might need a pink Stormtrooper hand. But fortunately, I was able to get a supplemental arm out of the other mold. Do they snap in? You super, like, super I have movement? to drill a hole. Drill holes. And then they're, they peg in. I'll paint, the, paint a few details on it. I mean, I try to make everything as simple as possible. There's an economy here. The final step is the packaging. Packaging is key. This, this is just Photoshop collage, pretty much printed on paper, and then I glue it onto the board and then trim it. You know, just being able to manifest something out of your imagination and have it go from a thought to a reality is, is a, it's a powerful feeling. Talking to the Suck Lord and other Toy Masters has really inspired me to step up my own custom toy making game. I wish someone would take my two great obsessions, pro wrestling and Marvel, and mash them together into one dope custom series. Oh, wow, look at that. Someone did. Me. CM Punk head, Seth Rollins' body looks an awful lot like Frank Castle, painted up and boom, say hello to CM Punisher. We haven't even begun to scratch the paint off the resin when it comes to the bootleg scene. So rest assured, we will be looking at much, much more custom stuff in the future. And while mass-produced toys are awesome, whoever takes those mass-produced toys, pulls them apart, 
repaints them, and transforms them into a Mr. T Jedi Knight, that's a true hero. So who's your favorite custom Toy Master on Instagram? What figure do you think they should make next? Let us know in the comments. Toy Masters, unite! Yeah!